Young Buck. How we doing? What's going, What's going on with you? I'm doing great. How about yourself? Ah, oh, man, I'm blessed, man. Any day above ground is a good day, man. Any day above ground is a good day. Absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. Thank you for joining me. I'm excited to uh I'm excited to have you on. Um, you know, when I was doing this during the pandemic, um, I tried to hit different, you know, different angles of how I wanted to do this. And I'm a Long Island, I'm a Long Island boy at heart, so I like to pay homage to, you know, to Long Island. Um you know, so I had some I had some people in mind. You was definitely one of the people that I had in mind. Um, and then, you know, last you know, last week, y'all y'all got y'all got the streets talking a little bit. Y'all got the streets <laughs> out here talking on the East End a little bit. So I thought it was a perfect. I thought it definitely was a perfect time to um, get you up on here and and talk about um, your basketball history out here on Long Island as well. And and uh, what you're doing now, and, and and talk about tapping with Tristan and all that. So let's 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 jump right into it. Um, let's talk about you coming up, man, and and who put the the ball in your hand. Like you didn't just start out on the basketball court. So so talk about your athletic upbringing. Well, first of all, I'd like to say thank you for sharing this platform with me. I really appreciate you reaching out, man. This is this is beautiful. So once again, thank you. Absolutely. So yeah, back back to to the beginning. Um, you know, I pretty much came out the out the womb a sports guy, but uh, believe it or not, the first game was baseball. Uh, so my dad my dad was a, a big time athlete in Amityville, played multiple sports, and he kind of got into that softball world early on. Like you know, real competitive. They would travel Connecticut and play money games and all that. So I was around that at an early age. You know when the when the, the Mets was popping in 86, I was three years old. So I was, you know, I was in that. And my first game was baseball, played six years old, was playing with the eight-year-olds, was playing up, and was really just playing basketball recreation-wise. Uh, I think the first time that I really, really got on any type of a team was on the blacktop uh, called our Make It Tournament. So that's probably about fourth grade. We had, we had a tournament at, our, at, at the Mac, Boulder Mac Park, our legendary park in Emmityville. And that's where I really started. You, yeah, you see it? Shout out to Andrew. Shout out to my boy, Andrew. Shout out to Drew for, you know what I'm saying, putting on for the city. But uh, that was really where, where, where we, we really developed the toughness and, and the love for the game. And right around fifth grade, that's when I had to make a, a decision if I'm going to stay with baseball because it's not big in my neighborhood. You know, I was going to have to do some traveling and, and probably not be with my guys. So it was a natural crossover to basketball. And then that's when I got – put on with uh, CYO. So St. Martin's is our team in, in Amityville. It's the Catholic school in, in Amityville. So sixth grade was the first time that I put a jersey on for like an indoor, uh, you know, indoor team. And that's when we started, you know, kind of hitting the ground running. Okay, now, nah, no doubt about it. And so obviously you fell in love with the game, you know what I mean? And got away from, got away from the baseball a little bit, but you still kept busy in the fall though on that on that gridiron too. So, you know, we're not gonna just, you know, show you love <laughs> on the on the hardwood. I also know that you was a you was a monster on that football team, play wide receiver, switched to the quarterback your senior year. So talk about that and those good Amityville basketball, I mean Amityville football teams that you also played on. Yeah, I, it it was a blessing. It was a blessing to be around so many really, really good athletes. And I think one thing that separated us at that time was just the, 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 the will to win. You know what I mean? We had a bunch of uh, not just talented guys, but we all competed with each other in the neighborhood, you know? We was in, we were shoveling snow, hooping, you know what I'm saying, playing killer man in the front yard or at, at the plaza. You know, we throw the ball up, you got to score a touchdown, one versus everybody. So we was doing those things. So, so I started playing football at seventh grade. We was running through, you know, a lot of the teams. So you can kind of see, you can kind of see something special for me. Uh, and football-wise, you know, I was just being an athlete. You know, I, I personally think that football is, is, is easier than basketball because it's less moving parts. You just master your position. And I was above average athlete. You know, hand-eye coordination was good. So I was a really good safety. But I had actually more offers for football than I did for basketball because of my athleticism for, for wide receiver and, and actually uh, uh, cornerback. So I loved it. But I didn't love the practices. I didn't love all of those things. I wasn't super physical, more of a finesse guy. Got more physical as I got older. It was basketball that was in my mind. I wanted to be a Big East player. 
and, and have an opportunity to go to NBA. You know, that hoop dream is strong in New York. So that's where that's where it started to to gravitate towards. But it was a package deal going through junior high, high school is football, basketball. Yeah, absolutely. So once you got to high school, once you got to high school, talk about the anticipation when y'all got to high school and saying, "Hey, we really got some dudes around us. We can do some. We can do some real good, some some special things around here. If we if we stick with that." Talk about that anticipation and how that grew and how y'all got the, the camaraderie between y'all and say, let's do something special here at Amityville because Amityville has a great tradition. So when I think of Amityville, I'm already thinking Shelton Jones. I don't care about nobody else. Right. The original Amityville horror. You understand what I'm saying? So so Big talk fair. about that because that's a lot for y'all to live up to. Absolutely. So like you said, it's a rich tradition. It goes back all the way to the 60s. We had gentlemen like Jerry Crocker. It goes way, way back. So we understand, at least from my standpoint, I understood the history. My dad grew up in it, and, and, and I, understood, I understood the tradition of it. One thing that we, well, we were lacking was, was championships. We would kind of fall short in those, in those areas. So we was like, man, we have to be, we have to be one, of the, one of the teams to do it. So we put that upon ourselves. You know, Ag, our legendary coach, was, was, was tenured for quite a bit of time, so he had – some experiences on heartbreaking losses and even wins. So he understood a lot more than what he did when he first came in there. And we just kind of seen the landscape of this thing, man. We are like, we have to separate ourselves. We don't, we don't, we don't want to lose. You know, we, we don't want to lose because nobody talks about the losers as much. And you're like, it's always the, yeah, they was talented, but, and we, we've seen quite a few teams and quite a few high schools that have that, that attached to their name. And that was something that we didn't want to do. Coming up, we've seen teams where Oliver, go, Oliver Hinkson and those guys go upstate. We've seen those guys go upstate and kind of fall short. So it was always right there. We was always there. And like you said, there's been tons of players that go way, way back. Of course, Shelton Jones is the pioneer for this thing. He kicked the door open for us. So shout out to the big homie. But the recognition of the tradition, but also can we just take it to the next level? We, we recognize we had the talent. Now it's a matter about getting it done because there's some other really good teams that you're going to have to play and go through. And then, so you know, like on Long Island, on Long Island itself has a rich tradition of basketball. And, you know, we've seen a lot of good, we've seen a lot of good teams out here, right, on paper, right? But it takes somebody special to take that, that specialness that's on paper, bring it together as a cohesive unit. So... I played for the legendary Ed Petrie out in out in East Hampton. There's John Niles from Bridge Hampton and those legendary teams. Dom Savino. And so the first thing I know is like, listen, when you talk about Jack Agostino, you talk about one of the best. And I think that he was the perfect coach for Amityville basketball. It might not be a lot of coaches that could have that could have messed up the talent that you guys had. It took a <laughs> special coach. So talk about your experience with Ags. He's definitely a legend for real. Uh, I, I, I co-sign all of that. Uh, I think one of the things that, that doesn't get highlighted enough is, is managing the personalities. You know what I mean? He's a, he's, he's a white gentleman from Center Reach, Long Island, all white town. And he's coming into this pressure cooker of Amityville, predominantly black. You know what I mean? Amityville is split, for those who don't know. The south side of Amityville by the, by the water is, is you know, pretty much uh, predominantly white. North side of Amityville, North, North Amityville is, is predominantly urban. Uh, mainly, mainly black, but minority. So that's where most of the basketball players come from. So him, he came in as a young guy, as a JV coach. So he filled in for one of our legendary coaches, Fred Williams, who passed away. Nobody wanted to take yeah. the job. I'll take it. So he's dealing with all of these guys. I'm talking about guys that real street guys that are on the team. He had to learn how to deal with that. One thing that he did was he was an honest guy. So one thing that we could all gravitate towards was him being real. You know what I mean? He was always real with us. And then one thing that he did was he extended his time and effort beyond what a normal coach would do. So because of that, man, it was automatic. Like, oh, that's our guy. He's with us. We're going we gonna, we gonna to run through the wall for him, and we're going to play hard for him, and we're going to respect him because he respects us. So it was a perfect fit for us, you know, in that regards. And he let us rock, you know what I'm saying? He didn't, he didn't really restrain us too much on the court. He gave us, the, he gave us a, you know, kind of an outline, and he let mm -hmm. us rock especially once he's seen that we had a couple of guys were, were really good basketball IQs, 
you know, such as myself and Jason, Jason Frazier, you know, above average basketball IQ guys with the will of win and all this talent, he kind of let us rock. And it was more of a partnership. It was mm -hmm. more of a partnership um, that you would see like from an NBA team. You would see more of a partnership and what you say, what you think, and rather than this my way to highway type of thing. And it worked very well for us because the respect, uh, the respect value was really, really high. And then we were all, you know, pretty much on the same page. But we held each other accountable. So he didn't have to step in too much. Like, Ag, we got this. Such and such, you're not playing well. You're playing like trash and vice versa. And we could talk to each other like that to where maybe we almost ready to fight, but we respond. So with that came the actual winning and setting the expectations up for us to do what we did. No question about it. So you brought up, you know, you brought up Jason Fraser, obviously um, high level talent, highly sought after basketball player, six foot 10, run like a deer, you know what I'm saying? Soft hands, shot blocker supreme, which there's not a lot of them on Long Island, you know what I mean? But, you know, Jason Fraser did his thing nationwide, so it was bigger than Long Island, but yeah. what a great centerpiece to have on Long Island. Um, I remember being home and being East Hampton and Amityville coming to East Hampton. And I said, okay, I've heard so much about this shot blocker. Let me see. Let me see what it's about. Let me see what it's about. Um, but I left the game, you know what I mean? Uh, my man, my man Garrett's on here, my boy G unit. And I remember leaving that game asking like, who's the little lefty <laughs> with the, with the hops and, and the little handle, you know, the little lefty. So when did you feel like in them, right? Cause obviously Jason cast a big shadow, you know what I mean? And, and rightfully so. But when did you feel like, I got to really run this team, right? Because everybody's going to focus on Jason. Somebody's got to do something. So when did you hit the switch in your head to say, in order for us to go to the level that we got to go to, I got to step my game up and I feel like I'm ready to do that. That's a great question. But it was probably, it was probably uh, the 11th grade year where we got cemented. Uh, eighth grade, I got pulled up to JV and I was just happy to be a part. You know what I mean? Ninth grade, I actually went to go try out for JV and they kicked me out the gym. Like, what are you doing? Because I didn't even really know. And they was like, you're on varsity, bro. You got to go there. So, you know what I mean? Like five games in, I had a write up and now I'm on the stage. I'm on, I'm, I, now they, they took me off the bench. I'm a starter. I've been a starter since ninth grade. That, that was pretty unusual at Amityville. So ninth grade was more of finding my way. You know what I mean? And then 10th grade, we're like, man, we got a pretty good team here. We ended up losing a heartbreaker to, to Southampton. And mm -hmm. I feel like if I would have played better, you know what I mean? I fumbled the bag. So I put that on me. And we, we just choked towards the end of the game. And, and Courtney Pritchett, who's a legend out there, he took over the game. We, we, we left mm -hmm. the door cracked for him. So after that, I was like, yo, we don't want to feel that again. We're not, we're not going to. We're not going to have that happen again. So back then, we didn't have any trainers. We, we didn't have many resources. It was more kind of just, you know, watch the players that you enjoy that you like, and you try to take those things and implement that. So that's what we did. You know, it's summertime, we're on the blacktop. We're working out, doing the very best we can to improve our game. But that, that Southampton loss propelled me mentally to say that this is not going to happen again. And, and everybody, everybody carried that over, and, and that's kind of what we went on our run to, to win multiple, multiple titles. So... Now, I got to ask this question. I got to get my years right. Now, did you play with A.J. Price? So, A.J. Price, the year that I was there, so him and my younger brother were really close, P.J. Smith. They mm -hmm. were backcourt mates. So, right. we're, we're three years apart. So, in ninth grade, A.J., my senior year, A.J. was at Long Island Lutheran. He came back. He said, they're, they're, you know, the parents said, oh, there's something special back, in, back home. There's something right. special back home. Let's get back, let's get back, to, the, let's get back to the show. So they came back mm -hmm. home, and then Dave was running ever since. So A, 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 was, A was playing with my brother. Uh, they graduated class of 04. I'm class of 01. So we never so – he, So you left, you left when he came you, – you were gone when he came back. Yeah, I, I, I pretty much just, you know, gave him the handoff. I handed it yeah. off to him, and, and, he, and he, took, he took off and running and, and, you know, far exceeded what I did. Absolutely. <laughs> now, nah, listen, but – so talk about, you know – so you played for Amityville. Talk about your AAU game. Talk about your AAU game, who you ran with, and who were some of the players that you kind of you kind of licked your chop against and said, you know what I mean, and, and kind of took your game to another level. Uh, yeah, so my AAU 
my AU story is very interesting. So I didn't get on the scene until my last year, you know, like uh, 11th grade. Yeah, again, my parents, uh, we're, we're getting looks at, at both basketball and football abroad, though. We had no idea what was going on. <laughs> we had no idea. We never had no idea how important AAU was to, to, to not just, not just uh, looks, but developing a lot because you're playing top, top competition. You feel me? So I had a chance to play with the Gauchos in 10th grade. Uh, mm -hmm. Jonelle Jones was my good friend uh at north babylon so he had a tryout with those guys at, at gaucho so i went with him i had my stuff and they say hey man you want to go play you want to play so i ended up being i'm trying out. i had no idea but i was hooping i can remember uh levi levine who ended up going to uh albany and uh adrian walton whole lot of game he was there too uh, who ended up playing at fordham and doing a lot of good stuff in the street ball uh so they were there and i was playing very well against them so they was like man who's this guy can we get him back? So he gave me his information. Was like, pass this off to your dad. My dad was like, ah, it's the Bronx. It's a little far. He didn't recognize the magnitude of that. So we didn't go. So again, I'm just playing. I'm, I'm not really playing anything during the summertime. Just summer league at Lindenhurst. Mm -hmm. After I win, after we win the state title, I was I was named the the state MVP uh, my junior year. So now Gary Charles hits me up. Me and Jason, we're on the Long Island Panthers. So for all those who don't know who the Long Island Panthers are top perennial top 10 to top five top five top 10 uh team in the country and this opened my eyes to the basketball world uh, it, it was, we had we had money men around we had all of the the, the big mm. fish so my teammates included i mean we think we had like 12 division one players man we had uh you know the likes of eric ferguson then we had eric king i played i played with lenny cook who was once rated higher than lebron james we had Curtis Sumter, Jason Frazier, uh, Charlie Villanueva, Sebastian Telfair, uh, John John Quintana. Then we would pull we pulled Major Wingate from Mississippi. He ended up going to Tennessee. My uh, Schenectady, uh, I think Schenectady went to Syracuse for a little bit. Six ten white dude from Connecticut. Mm -hmm. So we was pulling dudes from all over the country, man. And and we went to the big time tournament. Uh, I think we ended up getting upset, but we like top sixteen in that. But opened my eyes. Like you said, it, it leveled me up. So my senior year, I'm like, uh, in, in Long Island, I should be, I should be ready to really go. And again, I was a young. My birthday's in the summer, and I'm seeing guys reclassing and doing all these things. I was still kind of young. Yeah, I was still kind of. I was seven, uh, 17 when I graduated. So I'm like, I could have did that. I could have reclassed and all that. But you know, I got all of these things we didn't know, and you know, I was better off for it. Just the experience to just kind of see if the basketball world is big. It's big and it's cold. Mm -hmm. Nah, for sure, for sure it is. So state championship your junior year. Yes, sir. I'm on the circuit playing against everybody in the country and playing with some of the best and in, in playing with some of the best in the country. Yeah. I got to get this encore, though. I, I got to win the state championship my senior year. What was the mindset going into that senior year? Because you guys know you were heavy favorites coming back to do it back to back, but... We also know that's not the easiest thing to do. So what's the mindset coming off that summer travel, opening up your mind to it, and now saying, yo, this is my last year. What's the mindset going into the senior year? Uh, to be honest, uh, it was to be historic. We wanted to be a historic team. We understood the magnitude and the target that was on our back, but we welcomed mm -hmm. it. We welcomed mm -hmm. it. We didn't run from it, and it started with football. I was like, my senior year, I don't want to lose a game. I ended up losing two games, one in football in the championship, so I ended up losing my last game, and I lost my first game for basketball, and we ran the table. So we lost. I lost two games in the span of a week, and then everything else was a dub. So it was like, we're going to be historic. We ended up winning the, the, the Rutgers Cup for football for, for um, the first time in my school since, like, 1960-something. So we were the best team in Suffolk County. And we ended up losing to a really good Beth Page team uh, the last game of the season. We only had really – three practices. I don't even think we had three practices. It was three days after that championship, we go to Manhattan College and play Archbishop Malloy, who got four Division One players. They're a perennial powerhouse. And we go on neck and neck with them. And then I got knocked out. I got knocked out, like, knocked to do, I think, Wendell Gibson elbowed me, you know, knocked my contacts out. So I was out a couple of minutes. They ended up going up by, like, four or five. They started getting into the stall mode. We weren't playing on the shot clock. And they ended up beating us. And we was like, man, I don't like this feeling. The cool part about that, man, um, I made like the all tournament team, and uh, Tiny Archibald gave me gave me gave me the trophy, so that was a cool experience. But now I was like, 
we're not losing again. We cannot, we're not losing again. So we're like, we we probably could have set a couple of records there, but you know, Coach Ag was a was a gentleman. He called the dogs off at halftime. We probably could have set some, set some Long Island record for, for points per game, all that type of stuff. You know, we could have ran it out. I could have scored, you know, 50, 60. We could have did all of those things. But the goal was to not lose and put a stamp as one of the best teams to do it. And, and we did it. We did it. And we, we, we had some resistance upstate. We played a real good Bishop Timers team. And they was, they, was, they was cooking us. And this is the first time Ag ever yelled at us, ever. He came in, I mean, cursed us out. Smooth out, and then threw some boom against the wall. And he said, "Listen, man, I would never throw nothing at none of y'all." So he threw it at like one of the JV guys over his head, boom. And then he walked out. And then we in there. He walked out. He said, "I knew y'all had it from there." So he walked out, and then I stand up. I said, "Listen, this is not going down like that. We are not losing this game. This is this is not going to be my last game." So we storm back. We end up winning in double overtime. And then we end up beating a really good Benjamin Banneker team from Brooklyn. We, we handled them, beat them by like 18. So it was, the, the mind frame was there. Like, we know that we are the guys in this time frame. Let's go ahead and embrace it. Don't run from it. But let's take everybody's best shot. So it was a pretty cool experience because, like you said, it's not easy to do. No question. No question about it. And for those who are on here and aren't from New York State, they won the public high school championship. And if you win the public high school championship, you come back and you play the best from the city, the federations. So 27 in one senior year, public high school championship, back to back, and we take the federation. Yes, sir. You want to hide now. There's only one more thing left to do. I got to find somewhere next year to go for free. Yes, sir. St. John's, Pitt, Illinois, Texas A&M. Take me through the decision. Again, this is a whirlwind. You know, parents don't know what's going on. Um, but the first, the first school that actually offered me was Manhattan College. My junior year before I went, great fit, Bobby Gonzalez. And what I found out later, the the head assistant is is uh, Mike Malone. <laughs> he was the one that was there. Mike Malone was the head guy. I, for those who don't know, he was the he's the the Denver the Denver Nuggets head coach. Uh, so you don't know who guys who who guys are. So I was kind of looking down. I wanted to play Big East. That was my that was my goal. But to be honest, the best fit for me was probably Texas A&M. I went down there. Uh, Melvin Watkins was the head coach at the time. I went down there. Great fit. Great fit. Went to see them play against Oklahoma uh, with with uh, who was there? Hollis Price and the boys, Quantus White, and they smoked A and M. He was like, "Bro, we need you here. We need a New York guard. We need a guard to go against this guy T.J. Ford that's coming to Texas." But it was just like a, a foreign land. It was a form, it was country. It was like I'm far, and I didn't have the foresight to see the benefit of of doing that. Um, so you know, then we was going through some different things at at, at home. So St. John's, when St. John's calls you, you're playing at Madison Square Garden. It's right in the backyard. If you could make your name there, you can make your name anywhere. So it it, it started gravitating towards that. So it's like I'm gonna take the challenge. I'm gonna take the challenge to where. Everybody gonna be right there seeing this. So I'm even going sink or swim. So it, we went. We went there. We went. We went with St. John's and Johnny's at the time, top five winning this programs in the country. Uh, so we we took that leap. Nah, you know, I loved it. St. John's is my all time favorite favorite school. So I support anybody who goes there. You know, but you know what you find out is you know college is a lot different than. A lot different than high school, you know what I'm saying? And Mike Jarvis ain't the same as Jack Agostino. Like, you know what I mean? So there, there's so many there's so many lessons in that. So, like, talk about that, right? You're on this high, man, and, like, the crib is like, yo, Tris is just a half hour away, you know what I mean? And then things ain't really, it's not like it was. It's, it's a whole different level. So talk about the transition from being a high school superstar to starting all over again? Uh, this, I mean, we probably could do, you know, another 10 episodes. Absolutely. Break it all the way there. So I'm going to yeah. give you, you know, the best, the best condensed version that I can give you. Uh, the first thing is athletically, I was prepared. Athletically, I was prepared. But outside of that, I was ill-prepared. There was a lot of moving parts that I just wasn't ready for. Just, just off the terminology, there were so many words and terms that I had no idea. So I'm getting screamed on and everything like that. 
I didn't know how to change speeds and protect the ball. Everything was just athleticism, face up. Didn't know how to use my show. Like all that came on the fly and as I got older. So I was ill-prepared in that way. So it, I, allowed, I allowed these things to interrupt my confidence. And you and I both know that as a, as a hooper or really any type of sports player that your confidence is key. It's, and, and you shouldn't allow it to anybody. And this is something that I, that I, that, that I, that I tell my, my athletes that I deal with now is your confidence is going to come from your preparation. So don't allow anybody else to, to have that waiver. So my confidence was going up and down and I kind of fumbled the bag my, my, my freshman year. I had my opportunities, man. And I didn't, I didn't capitalize. I didn't capitalize on those. So I take ownership to that. Um, I probably could have worked on my game a little bit more. Uh, but to be honest, I was embarrassed about some of those things. So I was like, man, I'm just going to just go in the crib, go to my dorm room and just tuck off for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Try to get my mind right. We was going through things at the house. My, my parents was bouncing around from place to place. So I got things off the court that's going on. And I had a lot of pressure on myself. I got to make it. I'm one of the guys that's supposed to make it. I got to make it. So when you have that on on an eighteen year old kid, man, it's a lot. It's a lot to navigate through, and then you know, not really having a whole lot of outlets, but the basketball court, and that's not working out. You know what I mean? It's hard to navigate those things. But all in all, man, it's a blessing because what I will also tell myself too is like, there's somebody that wouldn't mind being in your position. You know what I mean? That's something I still use to this day, uh, even though you know it may not be going the way I would like for it to go, man. There's somebody that wouldn't mind being in my position. So that's one of the things that kind of kept me going uh, through my freshman year. Sophomore year, it almost didn't happen at St. John's. Mm. Uh, so quick, quick, quick backstory with that. After the after my, I'm seeing all, I'm seeing the lights. We got Showtime coming in. He's big time. Uh, Daryl Hill. We got Elijah Ingram coming in, All American, coming from St. St. Um, Anthony's. Jason Fraser didn't come there. So I'm like. I got it. I might get boxed out. I might get boxed out. So that's a real thing. I'm starting to see there's a business to this thing. I understand mm -hmm. that. So we went and had a meeting with Coach Jarvis. And I said, you know, what, what's it going to be? Am I going to be able to earn my spot? Or, you know what I'm saying, I, I, am I just delegated to the bench? You know, am I relegated to the bench? Because uh, if, that, if, if that's the case, then I'm probably going to just take a look at elsewhere. And elsewhere was going to be Georgetown University. So I had a, we, we figured out a way to, for me to go and play football one year so I don't have to sit out. And then I could mm -hmm. just be a walk-on uh, and then my, my, my junior year pro basketball. So mm -hmm. that, was, that was looking out like Georgetown. You know, that's where AI is. Where I, I'm cool with that. John Thompson, they're like, let's do it. But they had a guy named Tony Bethel, so they didn't have any more scholarships to offer. But we can do this route because we like you. We've seen you. We like you. But he was already committed from, you know, 10th or 11th grade. He said, nah, you know what I mean? You're going to earn your spot. So I say no more. I went and worked my tail off. I was with Jerry, Jerry Ice Powell the whole summer. Uh, Ice, is the, Ice is the homie. He got me right. He got me right. I came back preseason, like, you know what I'm saying, super confident, but it didn't pan out. You know what I mean? I was relegated to the bench. And fast forward through the season, I called my mom. We on the phone. I said, Ma, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to hesitate no more. We got an ESPN game. We playing Syrac Syracuse at the Carrier Dome. Carmelo Anthony, they're top five in the country. They play a zone. They're not even playing defense. I'm letting the gun go, Ma. She said, do it. Do it. You know what I'm saying? I believe. So, first minute, saying, I came in, pump fake, one dribble, jump shot. I'm like, okay, this is, I, I made it. This is the night. <laughs> this is the night. Got pulled. Didn't see the court again, dude. And I watched, I watched my teammates shoot a record low, two for 24 from the field. And you just watch that. So it's like, that hurts. You know what I'm saying? As a player, that hurts to say, like, man, that hurts to say that, that I'm definitely not in the plans. If you obviously see that it's not this gentleman's night. We're going to watch a record low. He made one more field goal than I did. And he took 23 more shots than That's I did. So I had to restrain myself from going crazy, you know what I'm saying? But I was jaded. I was jaded for the rest of the season, to be honest with you. I was just showing up. I was just showing up, you know what I'm saying, being cordial, but I was jaded. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was ready, I was ready to take it to the streets a couple of times. But it was a character-building moment for me because I knew that I was going to have to transfer. And with my stat line, the way it's at, I'm going to have to transfer to a lower Division One. And I was like, dang, that hurts. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big drop. Like you said, you know, having a, a heralded career in high school to this, I could have saved face and left earlier. Uh, so that hurt me. And then I end up, I end up, you know what I'm saying, looking at, looking at switching out.
Yeah. So what you wound up doing, and you, you ended up at St. Francis. So what yeah, was that exactly. like for you? So we came off of winning the NIT, so that was really cool, man. I was really happy for those guys. That's my one regret is I wish I wasn't as jaded and been able to celebrate my guys a little bit better. But that's hard. Again, at 19 years old, you know, you're, you're still in fight or flight mode. And I'm trying to find my way. I want, and I'm seeing guys that I played against. They doing their numbers, and I'm like, man, I'm right on their level, but I'm, 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 I can't even get a sniff of the court. You know what I'm saying? So you're trying to deal with all of that. And then again, my parents, you know what I'm saying? Like, money is low. So I'm like, I got to make it, man. I got to help them out. You know what I'm saying? So it was, it, was, it was tough. It was a tough thing. So, yeah, we ended up going to St. Francis. We ended up going to St. Francis, man, and I, they had no history. So I'm like, man, this is crazy. I'm over there practicing, man, and I didn't recognize it at the time. I'm at St. Francis in Brooklyn. I mean, he's looking at me, one of the guys, you're transferred from a Big East school. I'm getting yelled at, and I'm like, yo, I'm sitting out. I'm not even playing. But he's yelling at me, but he was trying to get me on board to say, listen, man, if I can talk to you like this and I can talk to everybody else, they're going to follow you. And I didn't recognize it. I used to get, yo, this dude is disrespecting me, bro. Why is he talking to me all crazy? You know what I mean? But I've seen now as a grown man, he was trying to, he was trying to you know, set a, a, a certain a certain template for the rest of the team. So I sit out and then uh, again, man, family struggling and everything. So I, I, had, I had a couple jobs in the summertime. It was brutal, bro. It was tough. I was working in Brooklyn Terminal Market and like Canarsie area, you know, in the middle of the night, not, not the safe. I'm doing this, man. I'm like, I'm a college dad. This is nuts. You know what I'm saying? So I was going through it. You know, money was low. It's, it's not, it's not, it's cheap. It's not cheap. So you're using a metro card and fender for yourself, getting food and all that type of stuff. So it was tough dealing with all of these different things and trying to compartmentalize all of this stuff. And when I got on the court, my uh, I actually got I actually got uh, suspended for my first three games my junior year because we got kicked out me and my teammate for selling books. We needed some money, so we were selling books. And ended up getting pent back to one of the guys we was using, and they put that white hot light on him, and he started. He started singing on us, man. He told on us, and they kicked us out. They kicked me and my teammate out, so we had to go through this whole process, you know what I'm saying, apologize, and like, we're not grimy dude. we just stuck right now. It's tough out here, um, especially in the summertime. There's not a lot of options for us, but we still got to pay this high rent, you know what I mean, in, in Brooklyn, you know, for our apartment and eat and, and, and travel. So we were selling off some books for the half the price and using it for food. So they was like, no, you kicked out. So we had to get that, and they ended up bringing it down to community service in three games. So my first game was against Army. Came back, and I smoked them. I had like five threes. I said, all right, this is going to be a good one. And I had like 26 points. Everybody's going crazy. Here we go. So then that year kind of goes up and down because of all of the emotions I'm dealing with outside of basketball. Uh, game felt pretty good, but it always felt like there was, uh, there was always some type of shackle on me throughout my whole college yeah. career that were really unexplainable, you know what I mean, to, to the outside public. So, again, overall, man, it wasn't a very good uh, college career. Not at all. Senior year was worse. Senior year was worse. We got a new coach, uh, Brian Nash from Seton Hall. Big expectations. I fell flat, man. It, it, it just, and, and some of it is really hard to explain when you're kind of going through a lot of different things off the court. So that's why I have a lot of uh, – I, I empathize with a lot of – a lot of athletes because a lot of people don't know what's going on outside. We just know them uh, and we want you to perform on the stage for us. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes when you're trying to find your way as a young male, especially as a young black male, it's really tough. It's really tough, man. So there was a lot of things going on outside of, outside of just the game of basketball. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I, I didn't come through. So I take ownership. I take ownership. I, I didn't have a good career, so I take ownership. It was me. Absolutely. But to every – Every valley, there's always a peak, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Talk to me about talk to me about Fit Lab. So, so I've been real thankful, man. I'm actually I'm actually out here in the in the in Dallas, Texas area. So, Mansfield, Texas. Uh, speaking of Mansfield, Texas, I, I keep Mansfield in, in prayer. There was a shooting over there uh, at Mansfield Timberview High School, which is uh, like ten minutes away. So, there was an altercation up there. So. I got a couple of a couple of uh, clients that's that's over there, a couple of young athletes. So keep them in prayer, man. You know, it's Absolutely. it's getting wild out here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, every day, yeah. So like you said earlier, every day above above ground, man, it's a blessing. So yeah, Absolutely. keep them in prayer. But yeah, I'm in Mansfield, Texas, man. It's it's a great great place for for athletes. So 
New York, really tough to start up, man. Cost of living is really high, so made that leap of faith to come out this way. I uh, got my LLC in 2016 and really just started <laughs> from scratch. You know what yeah. I mean? I got a, a small a small space in uh, Arlington, Texas to start about 2,000 square feet, man, and just started just learning from everybody and just trying to take my own experiences and tie it in with other people's experiences and helping me to grow and, and give these, not just kids, but even the parents stuff that I didn't have. I had loving parents. I had both my parents, so I was blessed with that. But the sports world is a beast. It's a beast, man. It's going, it's going to chew you up and spit you out. You only have a certain mm -hmm. amount of time in this thing. So I try to give these kids the real. Sometimes they like it, sometimes they don't. So we predominantly do sports and performance training. So my, my job is just to be an extension of their school. And what we really kind of concentrate on is injury prevention, because we want you to help be healthy, injury prevention, educating them on their body and helping them to be able to perform better, bigger, faster, stronger. And that way, if their body's ready, then you just go work on your skill set. You don't have to worry so much about the other stuff. Your confidence can remain high. And I also try to tie in just helping them with the recruitment, you know what I'm saying, with AAU stuff, just anything that I can help them to develop their character as well. So we try to make it more of like a family environment, but also give them pro-level training at the proper at the proper level, depending on their age and their sport. Absolutely. Now, that's a beautiful thing, man. You're doing big things out there, man. Proud of you, you know what I mean? And and Thank the you. good thing, what I like, what I hear is the give back, right? So, you know, like you had an experience, I've had an experience with, <laughs> with basketball, right? Whether it be a positive experience or a negative experience, but we're here to share things that have happened, things they can steer steer clear of, mistakes that we made in our own journey that we could have done better. We're able to give back now and, and share with kids. So that's a beautiful thing that you, beautiful thing that you're doing. Thank you. But I got to talk about the list. <laughs> I got to shift gears and I got to talk about the list. You knew it was coming. I got to talk about the list. Talk to me about tapping with Tristan and how that, how that got started. <laughs> so, 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 so long story short, man, I don't mind, I don't mind stirring the pot. <laughs> and it's been this way since, 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 since the, since the early days. I, uh, you know, I, I don't mind stirring the pot. I don't mind that type of confrontation as long as it's respectful. But one thing I do like to do as I got older is to, show respect and pay homage to the people before me and celebrate people while, while they're here. And if they're not here, let their family know that we love them and that we appreciate them. And at the same time, I like to learn. I like to learn. I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a historian type of a guy, not just in sports, but really any and everything that's going to help me grow. So going back through the pandemic, I started, I wrote a list out for, for Amityville and it went crazy. There was a lot of it was a lot of it was a lot of criticism, a lot of good feedback, but feedback nonetheless. It was still something mm -hmm. that was still, you know what I'm saying, uplifting the town. So I'm okay with putting myself on front street for criticism as long as we can be respectful in the thing and I'm going to be respectful to you and tell Absolutely. you the truth and love. If I make a mistake, I'll own it. But if Absolutely. I stand firm on what I say, I'm going to, I'm going to stand firm on what I say. But you know, I try to find that balance. So the list came up off the extension of some of the things I've did in the past. I've done in the past, excuse me. So I do have this channel tap in, and then I'll tie, tie it into the list. Have this, tie, mm -hmm. this, this thing tap in where it just started with a casual conversation with a couple of my guys from back home. Mm -hmm. So then I went and did a live with my brother and I, PJ Smith. We sat down mm -hmm. and we just aired out our relationship and we just kept it real. And we, you know what I'm saying? What was going on inside of our home, our relationship, I fumbled mm -hmm. the bag as a big bro in certain cases. Mm -hmm. You know, one yeah. of those. And people was like, whoa, you know what I'm saying? They was yeah. feeling that. So mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, I got, I'm got. i attached to a lot of athletes. Let's go mm -hmm. ahead and talk to some of these kids. So I talked to some of my current athletes. I talked to some of the former athletes. Because I think it's an opportunity to create a library. It's to create a library for anybody that's looking to grow. So mm -hmm. that's what I do. Whether it's one person or a million people, if we can get somebody to, you know what I'm saying, level up or wants to level up, they have this information. 
So Bronson Martin was one of the guys that I actually did a, a tap in with. So mm -hmm. fast forward to a couple of weeks ago, I'm like, yo, nobody really talks about the East End or Eastern Long Island as a whole. Why don't we do it now? I haven't mm -hmm. seen anybody do it. I've seen them talk about their selective school, their selective mm -hmm. era, but I haven't seen anybody talk about all at one time. I'm going to mm -hmm. tackle this project. Bronson Martin, will you help me? You're a natural historian. You're from there. You are a legend yourself. And you're very astute. And you're professional. I think we could, I think we could go ahead and tag team this thing. He said, absolutely, let's do it. So we did it. <laughs> so there's limited information that I know coming from Amityville. Yes. So I, I, get, I put my two cents in there. And I understand that I don't know it. So I reached out to all the different people that made. So we took that whole pot and we put it together the best we could in like a 10 day prop, a 10 day, let's get this thing out and let's talk about it. So that's kind of where it happened and it fell and we missed some names and we got some names right. Uh, so it was awesome. It was awesome. And again, I, I, I'm glad that we did it. Nah, no question. So first thing is first, putting any kind of list together when you, when your ranking is just a matter of opinion. I think I think people get lost in that, and that's something that I think that's something that needs to be said, right? This is my opinion. It doesn't have to be your opinion. This is my opinion, right? It, it was a collection. It, it was a collection of data. It was a collection yeah. of data, but at mm -hmm. the end of the day, I had to put my stamp on it. And, and we can have 25 people all the same, and we can have a few in a different order. And that's mm -hmm. the beauty of, of a list. The, of a list. The, main thing, the main thing for me was the topic of conversation. Mm -hmm. The topic of conversation, paying homage to guys that came before us and guys that are even current to this day, and then mm -hmm. bringing up something positive to talk about. Because mm -hmm. you're, you're going to have, there's going to be at least five to 10, maybe 15 names that we completely swung and missed on. Dang, I didn't know that. But because we did the list, now we know that. They, these right. names wasn't even brought up. We're bringing it back. Right. We're bringing it back to life. So I like that. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with yeah, taking. Nah, it they, needs they, to they happen. You know, it needs to. It needs to happen. Like it's and these are because there's a lot of basketball people out here, and I think it also has to do with criteria. You know what I mean? Like, what are you basing it on, right? So there might be some players in Amityville who didn't even get a chance to play, but they was nice. You, know you can't I mean? add them, but you can't add them to well. You can't add them to that. Like you can't be the hoop legend like that. It got, we was basing on what you did in your uniform, right? That's what you nice. did in your uniform. Right. And then for the master list, you know what I'm saying? For this the Eastern Long Island list, it was what you did on all the levels. So you and I both know there's going to be certain things that have you jump a level. Mm -hmm. There's going to be certain things that have you jump levels because when you put resumes in a pot. It's gray. It's a gray area because you might have some guy that was decent in high school and was all world in college and vice versa. Which one is going to weigh out in that? And that's where you get some of the thing. You had a guy like somebody that played at Greenport class D versus somebody that played at Bellport class A. Mm -hmm. What do you do? If you split those dudes, he might score 4,000 points at class D school. We don't know. So we got to find a way to just balance it out. The best way we could do it was, first of all, awards, you know what I'm saying, numbers, mm -hmm. titles, and then what did you do leveling up? Now, if, you're, if you made it to the NBA, man, then, yeah, yeah, you straight to the top. You should, you should you definitely gotta, do you it. Got, you, you got, that's the pinnacle of the sport. Right. Yeah, so I think it, the it, criteria, it, I think, like I said, everything is based on criteria. And you guys yes, laid out a criteria, which wasn't, which wasn't said. My my question, my question is with the title. My question, my first thing is the title of it. And when you say East End to a kid from Amityville, anything out here is East End to you. But from well, a kid well, from well, well, hold on, so, so for a kid from East Hampton, it don't get no further out east than East Hampton. The East End means something totally different than the list. So we don't consider Bellport. Floyd, Patchogue, anything past Cinema Riches, we don't, because it was about League 7 and League 8 when I was coming up, which totally changed. Amityville wouldn't be in our league, but you guys played East Hampton in the league game by the time you, when the time you graduated from high school. 
So I think for, for, for old heads, right? Like when you say East End, we were expecting, like we know David Russell was good, but David Russell wasn't considered an East End basketball player. You understand what I'm saying? So um, a lot of good, a lot of good players on, a lot of good players on the list. A lot of, a lot of newer players on the list, right? Because you guys know more information, right? Like that's around that, around that era. But again, it's your opinion. It did get, it did stir a conversation. Which NBA, <laughs> right? Who's the who's the best of all time in the NBA, right? You they're say still, Jordan. They're still, they're still like, arguing about that, right? But you, and you're never gonna get it right. So it's like, okay, if you're talking about the first thing that they say about Jordan, and LeBron is Jordan won six championships. Well, we're talking about championships then Bill Russell is the greatest because he got 11 of them things. You know what I mean? So it all depends on criteria. And like I said, I think it's extremely tough to rank. You know what I'm saying? I think it's extremely tough to rank. Like, you know, and, and I, you know, I, I know a couple of them being from, you know, your foot walkers, your Randy Smiths. Like, yeah, I get that. And, um, but it would be tough to like, like I said, I think you're from Amityville and it was tough to you to put a list together just from where you're, where you're from, like you're not gonna please everybody, and, and it's definitely. Oh no, you're not gonna ever please. And, it's, yeah, it's we talked, and we talked, and we ego. definitely talked about ego. it. <laughs> now nah, we definitely, we definitely talked about it, and that, you know, that could be another thing. And whenever, when I see, when I, when I, you know, we can get Bronson on here, we can, we can talk about it another time on some names that was missed or some names that definitely sure. shouldn't have been on honorable mention that should have been placed up there. You know what I mean? But yes, you know, for I, sure. So you guys did, so, a, you know, you guys did a good job based on the research that you guys did, and you know what? Yeah, we, I can put out, I can put out a list tomorrow, and you could be like, "What?" You know what I mean? So the good thing about it is you're allowed to have your own opinion, right? Absolutely. We, we can talk absolutely. about it. We we're not arguing. We're not arguing about it. You know what I mean? And we've talked prior to this about it, and it's you know, respect is respect. I saw people commenting on your Facebook post. All your Facebook, all your responses were the same, though, right? You know what I mean? Hey, give me the resume and tell me who you think that they should have been over. You know what I mean? Yeah, we could have a conversation. I have no problem with that. And, and we did, we did, uh, we did see, we put, we put that it was going to be from, because I said, East, I originally said Eastern Long Island. Right. Which and that then he is. Was like, yeah. And then he was like, say East End. That's what we call it. So I was like, all right, I'm going. So it was kind of like a blend. So we actually. Yeah, so that's put, what I'm, I'm going to get him for that because he's from West Hampton. He should know. He should know the difference. Yeah, East End is. You out there? You out here? You out there? Yeah, you out there, yeah he should know the point. difference. So I put East. If you look at the little logo, it says mm -hmm. Eastern Long Island. So okay. we actually we actually set the the the, the Mason Dixon line at Petro. Everything okay. East. Everything. If you go and look at the original post, mm -hmm. East of Petro. Mm -hmm. East of Patrick. So we're going to include all of that section. And there's a couple of uh, play players on the honorable mention that we was like, we kind of came to the conclusion, let, let's give a flower to that school because they ain't going, that's it. That's their best player. <laughs> so we could probably pull, you know what I'm saying? We could probably pull five to ten names from just a few of these high schools. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of mm -hmm. how it ended up. Otherwise, now we got an 80-man list. <laughs> Yeah, nah, nah, for, nah, nah. So we had to have nah. a cutoff. We had we had to have a cutoff, man. And 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 the only thing that probably would have been better if we maybe took a little longer. We could have took a little longer, deep dive a little bit more. But but such is life, man. We wanted, to get this, we, we wanted to get this thing out and, and, and get the dice rolling. And it got that rolling. And I, I always encourage people, I said, man, let me see your list. Let me see your list. So you know what I'm saying? We can we could I I I have no problem critiquing your list. You could take mm -hmm. the heck out of mine, and I'm not. You know what I'm saying? I'm, 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 I'm standing there, going toe to toe for you respectfully. Mm -hmm. Let's see your list. You know what I'm saying? Let's see your list. But yeah, there is East End is 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 a certain amount of schools. Absolutely. We, Absolutely. we extended it, and then we said Patrick out. Mm -hmm. So uh, originally, I said Eastern Long Island. He was like put East End. Right. 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 So, right. No, so no, you no, know, right. I obliged that, and, and I get what you're saying. But yeah. all in all, man, it was great. I, I nah, listen, great. it's like conversation. Right. Yeah, nah, so conversation is conversation. It's good to talk about it. And it gives other people to say, you know what? I'm going to do something. So, yeah, go ahead. Let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, let's let's do it. And and then you, because, right, because I could put out a list and somebody's going to come at me. But this is what I'm saying. You got to, you know, saying. and that's all it is. 
Yes, That's all it is. Tell me about the big event 2022. <laughs> I ain't even from there, and I'm excited about it. Listen, my wife got excited about it, but Shelton Jones got to be there. Is Shelton Jones going to be in the building? 100%. Woo! She should be watching. We're going to be up in the building. One of my all-time favorites. Talk about it and talk about when the idea came from for you. You, you got to pull up, man. So, again, you know what I mean? Like, like as an entrepreneur, my mind stays going. And my wife always like, I don't know how you manage so many different things at time and still have time for family. It'll drive me crazy. Just mm -hmm. feel like it's a, you know, it's a gift from the most high to be able to manage. And, again, I really like, I really like to, to be a part of sharing and spreading mm -hmm. love and having people, you know what I'm saying, feel good about things. So uh, back in the pandemic, you know, we, you know, people, we, we was in, we wasn't outside. So we yeah. talking crazy on Facebook. So <laughs> especially after I put that list out. So yeah. Mark Johnson said, yo, we need to get an uh, alumni game at Amity uh, at, at the Met. So he's like, yeah, we want to do that. Maybe, maybe, you know, same maybe next year. So we just put a pin in that idea. So fast forward to, uh, I would say July. Me and Mark are talking, you know what I'm saying? We building a little bit more after this list. Mark is a big time player from-, from um, Shout out Andy to Big Hill. Mark. Shout out to Big Body Mark. No question yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah, shout out to Mark. He's class of 05. So we talking and he was like, bro, you know what the word on the street is? I said, what's going on, bro? And he said, yo, in Long Island, they say that after Amityville guys are done hooping, they don't, they don't hoop no more, like they done. And I was like, that's the word. Mm. He's like, yeah, they got these rivalries, never die tournaments, and we don't never really pull up. Yeah, so they talking crazy, like the other towns. So I was like, I don't think that's all the way fair because we got quite a few guys that don't even live in state. We don't, we, you know what I'm saying? We don't branched out, which I think is a testament to, you know what I'm saying, the program and, and, and guys, you know, having opportunities to explore other options in life. So I was like, all right, bro, give me a couple of days. Uh, you remember you was talking that talk? He said, yeah. So I came back, man. I just formulated something. I said, we got to have an alumni tournament. We got enough players to do that, which is a blessing. Not all the schools have that. So forget just team versus team. We've seen that. I got to do something a little different. So now I'm, now I'm jogging. I'm like, all right. So four teams. We're going to do a four-team tournament, right? Of all the errors. Then I'm like, we're going to do a draft. I've never seen an alumni game do a draft. Like, we're going to do it on live so everybody can watch and interact and talk crazy <laughs> and get feedback. So we got four captains that's going to be – it's going to be myself, Mark Johnson, Jason Frazier, and Mike James are going to be the captains. So we're bringing all of the errors. My dad is even going to participate. So we got class of 1975 – all the way up to Jason, uh, to excuse me, Josh Serrano, 2018, participating in this thing. So it's going to be a walking museum. However, we get in shape. I'm telling everybody get in shape because we really playing. Like we're going to do NBA rules and we're going to do the Elim and we playing. So get in shape. But I just think that it's a beautiful thing to see a bunch of men, especially a bunch of black dudes coming from the same school, being able to do something positive. And then we're going to, you know, free event. We're going to love day. Everybody come on in, you know what I'm saying? First come, first serve. And we're going to take the proceeds and we're going to give a scholarship to one of the student athletes that's there right now. So it's not a money grab. This is going to be love day for, 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 the, for the community. It's going to be an opportunity for everybody to celebrate one another. And we're going to make it a real professional event, man. So I'm excited to be a part of, you know, putting it together. So a lot of ideas are coming from, but we got so many great people behind the scenes that are helping move this needle forward. And we're going to do this on April 9th, 2022. So I gave plenty of time so we get accommodations right. People can get their body right, drop some of that 30 to 40 pounds off that, try to get that dad by, right? You know what I'm saying? We hooping. Yeah, you know, we're going to be talking crazy to one another, but respectfully. And we're going to honor Jack Agostino while we do it. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to get... We're gonna get uh, Newsday, and we're gonna we're gonna make it a big a big uh, big deal. And we got a new gym for the first time in my lifetime, so we gotta go ahead and and you know baptize this thing with all of the legends. 
we got we got you know five pro athletes you know what I'm saying between basketball and football and they all say yes they all would like to come through and, and participate man so it's a blessing for me to be a part of putting this thing together but at the same time man we're gonna really play so 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 I put the list out so you, I, I seen when I start putting lists out man people get in their feelings so I'm 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 actually becoming accustomed to this. Put the list out, man. We don't got enough guys from this era. We got enough too many guys from that era. But I'm like, listen, man. When was the last time you hoop, man? You just you just grilling now, bro. You you professional grill master. Like you ain't. When the last like that. time you tried to put a game together? How about that? You know what I'm saying? That's There's... another thing. That's another thing right. too, man. Like like you got people that are definitely congratulating, and I appreciate that. But there are some guys that are just giving criticism, and it's like I haven't seen anybody do anything or go the extra mile to put anything like this together. So, right. so I'll take it. I'll take it, man. And I'm, and I'm thankful for all the people that are showing love and anybody that's that's you know what I'm saying playing the sidelines hating. And God bless them. He's not going to stop the shine. We still going. We still going rock. So I, I mean, I've learned. I've learned to just deal with those types of things, man. But for the most part, it's been love. It's been a lot of love. I created a a Facebook page, Long Live Amityville. Mm -hmm. So I'm celebrating, you know, we're celebrating many different players and, and teachers and great, like, just love day for Amityville. It's a very unique town. A lot of great people to come through there and from there over the years, not just in sports. So we're going to just celebrate this town, man, best we can, especially in the midst of this whole pandemic situation, man. There's a lot of negativity going on. If we can breathe some positivity and breathe some life into the community, man, we might as well do it. Absolutely. So, I mean, your last name's Smith, and you like to start a little controversy. You might be related <laughs> to Stephen, might be related to Stephen A., you know what I'm saying? Put so, him on the other side, man, let him talk. <laughs> Put him over there, man, I'm, I'm ready for that guy, too. No doubt, no I doubt. <laughs> so as we, as we get ready to close this thing down, what I like to do is I like to ask some, some, some quick-hitting questions for you, first thing that come to your mind. And I'm definitely going to put you on the spot with this thing, you know what I mean, and, and keep this energy going and give, give them something else to talk about. So first thing is uh, you're having dinner, and you can, invite any, you can invite any three guests that you want to this dinner, dead or alive. Ah, oh, man. That's a, that's a real tough one. Let me see. Because uh, anybody that knows me, I don't lock in too much to, to people that are, that are so-called celebrities. But uh, I like to learn. Uh, that's a really good question. Really good question. Probably, probably, probably my uncles, man, my two uncles that, that have passed away. So that would be two, man. They loved me, man. They supported me all through. God bless them. You know, they passed away past previous years. So mm -hmm. uh, I'll, probably, I'll probably keep it family. So it will be two, them two. And, and probably my mom, man. My mom got to be there. My mom okay, has been my rock. My man, my mom is my has been my rock. Um, so it'll be them. I'm cheating because I'm adding another person. <laughs> so yeah. and my wife and my wife. I gotta have my wife there too. Okay, gotta be there. Gotta have that. Gotta have that. No question I see, about I had it. Four people. <laughs> top, top five favorite point guards. Okay. Uh, off top, we're gonna have Baron Davis in that thing. We got uh, we got B Diddy in that thing. I'm a huge B Diddy guy. I like uh, I like Kyrie Irving's game. I like Rod Strickland's game. Mm. Uh, who else? Let me see. I like Dame Lillard and then probably Steph. Okay, nice list. Nice list. Those top five. Amityville Warriors. Oof, that's Tristan tough. Tristan Smith's right. top five. Tristan Smith's top five. It don't matter. It's your top five. If I was to put Warriors, if I was to put, and this is this is interesting, you're doing that because I was thinking this is a great topic to have for this Long Island basketball. If I was mm -hmm. putting a starting five together for my high school, it would be these guys. So I'm gonna give this as a top five. It would be Jason Frazier. Uh, Shelton Jones. Then I'm gonna have Jay Joyner at the at the three because of I graduating here. Jay Joyner. I'll put Jay Joyner in there because I think he would be perfect for today's game. He's not super. He's super skilled. And he's six seven, long arms. So I'll put him at the three, and I'm gonna put 
I'll put AJ, AJ Price and Mike James in the backcourt. 